The heist went like this. Rise the ranks, gain trust, smash and grab. You seem like a super nice guy. Hey, this is a joke. I didn't really know where I would go from there. But I would go him into it. That guy really did this. He's like a legend to me now. Losing a friend was worse than losing the spaceship. How long do you have to know someone before you can really trust them? In the virtual galaxy of EVE Online, you never can really truly trust the people you fly beside. It's a lesson that one of the game's most battled hardened pirates had to learn the hard way. Grand Theft Frigate, scammed in outer space. There's a good chance you've heard of EVE Online already. This massively multiplayer space game is a sprawling virtual galaxy shared by hundreds of thousands of players from all over the world who war, trade and steal from one another. If you die in battle, your character will respawn, but your ship is destroyed for good. Make one wrong move and entire years of hard work can go up in smoke. That's exactly what makes the game so thrilling. There have been a lot of big scams in EVE Online, but I think this one struck a chord with the community because it was just so ruthless and intimate. It wasn't about the money. It was about stealing someone's most prized possession just because you could. My name is TikTok and um, I do a lot of small gang PvP and focus on that, which led to me being a director in Dumbamark Police, which is a collection of unaffiliated players who share a passion for small gang PvP and uh, very expensive spaceships. The um, Awamaki cluster is one of the most dangerous places to be in the whole game. When I was still a uh, fairly new player, I joined the uh, fairly well-established players and a few of them actually had their own unique spaceships. And I realized that I really wanted one. And the Krimoas really stood out to me. So here I have a model of the Krimoas. It's very fast and it has a lot of firepower and it has a, a cloaking device. I like to do hit and runs. So it fits my playstyle perfectly. At that point, while I was still fairly new and, and barely knew how to play the game, I decided, hey, I want this. I started saving up and tried to learn how to play the game. And after a year or two, I, I finally had enough in-game currency to buy my own. So it's not just any random Krimoas anymore. It's, it's my Krimoas that people associate with me. TikTok's Krimoas is a one-of-a-kind ship on EVE Online. Only 50 were ever created and given to the winning team of the 2013 Alliance Tournament. In the eight years since, however, most of the Kromoas have gone missing or were destroyed. Only a dozen are estimated to still exist, each worth billions of isk, Eve's in-game currency. So the, the Kromoas is a special ship, and these like small gang, uh, very elite pilots just strive to fly these. This becomes their bucket list uh, to fly one of these things because they're so exclusive, uh, so limited, and also really overtuned. It's like just driving a sports car uh, down to the mall. Being a veritable killer hornet isn't why TikTok cherishes his particular Kromoas. It's that this ship that most players are too scared to fly has killed 600 other players and counting. Whenever you kill a pilot in EVE Online, your ship gets this special engraving called a kill mark. It's kind of like having a necklace with all the teeth of your enemies on it. A skilled PvP pilot might have a couple of dozen, maybe a hundred on their ship, but at the time of this heist, TikTok's Chromoas had over 400. Somehow I've been able to know my limits with this ship and, and stay safe. And it wasn't that he was just like setting up easy farmable kills. He was just going into the unknown with this thing. It takes like a true madman to go out in space uh, and try and find kills with it. In EVE Online, scamming is just another way to make a buck. Players spend months infiltrating enemy corporations, while others whittle away their days peddling cheap scams in trade hubs. 
The doggy dog trading environment in EVE Online makes it a breeding ground for scam artists to thrive. And unlike other MMOs, there's not very many rules forbidding it. So the, the scams they trigger in EVE Online, it's something that EVE is definitely known for. These are just not your average game players. So pulling a fast one on an EVE player, you really have to work at it to get there. The people will probably most commonly know me as, as one of two names, which is either C-3PO, which is my uh, main character in the game, uh, or Samantha Myth, which is the character that I use to pull off this heist. When I first was introduced to Samantha Myth, it was through Casper. In game, my name is Casper24. Uh, I started this game way back in like the ninth grade, 2004, so on and off over a long time. I met Samantha Myth uh, in an in game channel and just like linking some pretty cool kills that you can click on and see what ship he used and what he'd killed. Like, All right, you know, he just he seemed like a super nice guy. And so we met him in this channel. We invited him to fly with us. And this kind of natural meet is how we made sure that we chose who was there, is because we didn't want to get baited into dying or giving stuff away. Casper was flying with him. I thought, you know, this guy's trustworthy. I can fly with him too. So I started flying with him a lot. Eventually, all we did was fly together. TikTok didn't know it, but he was about to become Samantha Myth's latest victim. The heist basically went like this. My goal was to uh, not only get invited to join this group, but to sort of rise the ranks of the Amamaki police, gain trust with the more senior members, and get to a position where I have access to anything that's of serious value, you sort of smash and grab. Pulling off a heist of this magnitude in EVE Online is no simple feat. The Amamaki police weren't exactly a trusting bunch, and Samantha Myth was a stranger to them. To pull this off, he was going to need luck, patience, and a little social engineering. A normal day in the market police, you would have players flying around the system. We'd hang out on comms, just chat while we were blowing up other stuff and trying not to be blown up ourselves. Boom, surprise, there is, you know, trillions of VISC on the grid killing you, and then we just go hee 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 and all talk to each other about how cool we are. <laughs> Tick and Casper, for better or worse, they were kind of, uh, I guess, in the sense that they thought they were much better than everyone else. You know, they would, um, you know, post about their, their amazing kills and their super fancy ships and, you know, how elite they were. So it was almost kind of like uh, they were goading me into it. He wasn't the best player in terms of skill, but he was fairly competent. So he knew his own limits and uh, he was always up to try new things and he was up to do that with me. The hardest part of the scam, strangely enough, was actually getting my foot in the door. And that basically involved me sitting around in Amamaki, sort of just being there on call and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of here, you know, you can bring me along if you want, I'm not bad. But now that Samantha was in, he was faced with his biggest challenge yet. Convincing TikTok to hand over his most prized ship. If you think about, you know, jet skis or motorcycles or anything, yeah, it's cool to do it by yourself. It's much, much funner to do it with your bros and share that experience, right? We, we thought we were pretty good judges of character up to this point. There's an old saying that this is Eve after all and you should never trust anyone, not even yourself. I eventually purchased my own Lions tournament ship. It was called Whiptail. Um, and I flew that quite regularly with the group. Uh, it was, you know, sort of a, a trust builder. It was very expensive for, for me back then. But what I sort of started to do, especially with the, the members of the group that I actually personally trusted, um, was just give the whip tail to them. It's like, hey, you wanna, you wanna try a whip tail? He goes, oh yeah, sure, okay, let me give you the Cremoas. Don't worry about it, just take it. Uh, I know you're not gonna steal it from me. Um, and slowly over time, that became the new culture of the group. It was all about sort of engineering a way to get one of these ships traded to me without having to give them anything in return. Just because Samantha Myth saw his opportunity didn't mean he could rush to take it. It was going to take time to build enough trust. A lot of time. I uh, played with Samantha Myth the most during those 18 months we were together. Slow and gradual process of being around, going on more fleets, engaging in more fights and having good times, I suppose. I got very close to him. We talked a lot, you know, about the game. We even talked about real life occasionally. 
and during these 18 months, I would say he was the closest friend I had in the game. You know, and until such a time that I was sort of given access and part three of the plan was, you know, obviously the, the smash and grab. After 16 long months, Samantha Myth finally felt confident enough to put the last stage of his plan into action. Again, at that point, sort of I'd given TikTok uh, my whip tail and, you know, I didn't ask for anything in return. He uh, sort of almost had the, uh, the social onus to, you know, sort of turn around when I sort of said, hey, can I borrow your Cremoas to say, yes, of course you can, because obviously you'd just given me your whip tail for the week. A week later, Samantha popped the big question. When Samantha offered me his whip tail, for me it was business as usual. I've had far more expensive ships given to me for nothing in return, so I didn't really think much about it. So no alarm bells went off whatsoever. It was just a another day in the life of the Milwaukee police. He put the Cremoas in a trade window and I clicked accept, but he also has to accept that. So it was just kind of sitting there in, in limbo. And before he clicked accept, he's like, hmm, I don't know why I've got such a bad feeling about this. But then, you know, obviously he was, he was joking. I, I made some joke about, you know, don't lose it or whatever. And then he said, yeah, yeah, sure. And that was really it. But he, he clicked accept and uh, obviously, you know, at that point, obviously it was, it was mine. Days after Samantha had taken TikTok's Cremoas, TikTok woke up to a horrible surprise. My uh, friend poked me in one of the in-game channels and linked the Reddit thread and asked me, hey, is this a joke? So you had this Reddit thread where Samantha confessed to everything he had done. So when we saw the, uh, the Reddit thread by Samantha Myth or C-3PO, we, we knew it was true. So my um, gut reaction was disbelief. How can he do something like that? Like, what is real? What isn't real? Like, is anybody told me real? Like, does he care about me? Does he, you know, not care about me at all? Like, has he been faking everything we've been doing for the last 18 months? And then I basically put my feelings into words. I can confirm he has my Cremoas. Well played to you, sir. You've been one of the few people I actually enjoy playing the game with, so I'm more sad about losing our friendship and future fun together than some space pixels. Well, this is actually really going to suck, because it's not only, right, you're going to lose the ship, you're going to lose a friend, which is kind of a bigger deal than the ship, but also you're kind of losing your play style. For I didn't really want a new one. I either wanted to get my Krimos back, or even just quit the game completely. I didn't really know where I would go from there. Tick obviously made a you know pretty heartfelt reply, which was you know kind of pulled up the heartstrings a little bit. It affected me outside the game too. I've generally been a very trusting person, and this could change that. I think overall I enjoyed our time together more than I enjoyed flying the spaceship in the first place. Samantha's heist was brutal. And while many players have a healthy appetite for these kinds of scams, the response from the EVE community was divided. I think at the time when it was done, the community of EVE Online had sort of shifted away from scams are great, scams are a way of life in EVE. Back in the day, you know, and I'm saying back when I started playing EVE Online, scams were probably one of the greatest ways to make money. These days, making money in EVE Online is extremely easy. Realistically, these kinds of scams, they do have the potential to potentially hurt someone. The EVE player's uh, reaction was like very shocking to me as well. Their hearts kind of melted a little bit for every single person that was like, uh, their heart was breaking for TikTok. There was probably another person in the background going, wow. That guy really did this? I can't believe it. He's like a legend to me now. Uh, I want to come up with like a heist this good. The community response surprised me. A lot of people reached out to me and asked how I was doing. And in a lot of ways, I can almost appreciate that it happened just because I suddenly realized how many people care about me. That's when the unexpected happened. He ended up putting it up for sale on the forums. It ended up being bought by some completely unaffiliated player. So we thought it was gone forever. After talking with uh, Samantha Myth for about two weeks on Skype, 
he ended up asking if there was anything he could do to repair a friendship. And I told him that I just wanted my cremolas back and if he could help me out with that, I wouldn't hold any ill feelings towards him. Then he just sent me 120 billion isk, which was the value of the cremolas at the time, what the Blue Melon had paid for it. And then I just gave that money to Blue Melon and suddenly the cremolas was properly mine again. You know, after sort of all was said and done, I sort of, you know, said, hey, look, um, you know, thanks for sort of being so cool about this. Like, you've got to understand that I actually didn't do this for, for, for the money or, or to be spiteful or anything like that. Um, I did this because, you know, I just wanted to prove that I could, basically. Friendships in a virtual space are very, very significant because they form bonds. They're real life interactions within the, the world itself on an online sphere, but also they have real life intercomplications as well. It sounds like what happened with Samantha and TikTok was that they got past the stage of where that mistrust actually comes into play. But he very much also was testing the boundaries, the limits of that, which is what you do in Eve. You test the boundaries, you test the limits of, of what can can happen. We always kind of love to see these stories. We definitely like just respect the hustle. It's why we make EVE Online for these stories to thrive. I think my biggest lesson has been that it's very difficult to predict how people are going to act. So I was always prepared for the inevitable loss, but I wasn't prepared to lose a friend. But I also didn't expect the amount of support I got. And as for uh, parting words with uh, Samantha, if you ever meet up, you owe me a beer. TikTok learned a hard lesson, but fortunately, he had the community and his close friends to navigate his way through it all.